Okay, here we go. So I'm here with Philip Duff. It's probably one of the best seminars that I've ever experienced at any one of the Miami Rum Festivals. You've taught us so much today, Philip. Thank you. And Philip is a, how did you describe yourself? Spiritual advisor. Spiritual advisor, <laughs> but in what way? <laughs> well, I advise drinks companies and I give seminars and I hope to help people get to know drinks and cocktails a little bit better, both the and drinks companies and the consumers. And I almost thought you were a scientist because the way you talk today about cocktails in terms of esters and these complicated long chemistry names. Monoterpene aldehydes, baby. <laughs> oh, boy, that turns me on. Okay. So um, today we talked about terroir, which is usually a, a term that identifies a particular beverage with a particular region and all of the agricultural product of that. But rum is so international. Could you talk a little bit about the, the barrels and where the rum comes from? You know, you could have molasses from one island, but it's being fermented in another island, and then it's being aged in France? Exactly. Um, so the concept of terroir is a complex one, and the real debate is, does it exist at all? Because if you say, okay, French wine's from France, but France is a very big country. You've got a very different climate in the north to the south, or the east to the west, and even from valley to valley. And that's only wine. What if you then take wine and you start distilling it? That makes it even more interesting because once you start distilling, you're making such a huge difference in the product. You begin to ask yourself the question, would it matter where the base ingredients came from or where uh, it was eventually distilled or whatever? So that was what we did today with Plantation Rooms, kindly uh, providing support. We sort of debated a little bit, does terroir exist? What is it? And if it does exist, does it exist for rum? And what I love about it is that, you know, well... Okay, so I have a barrel from a different country with molasses from this other place and that's been fermented, um, and then it's being aged in somewhere else. So when you finally taste this thing, you're tasting the world. You are a little bit, and sometimes there's practical reasons for it as well. For instance, um, the thing about the colonies, whether they were Dutch or French or German or English, was that they just took the commodity products from the colonies, like sugar perhaps, and they shipped it back to be processed in the, uh, the, the motherland, thereby making the most money. Uh, this, of course, was terrible for the economies of the islands, but great for the mother countries. And rum has always been shipped back to be aged and blended and sold on in mother countries like France and England. So you could buy what was called early landed rooms in Bristol and London and uh, Liverpool, for instance. So in a way it's a historical tradition, but it does of course raise the question, how typical are these rooms for the islands from whence they come? Yes, and, and that's something that you certainly have to question when you're, when you're sampling, because there's, it's gone through so, such a long process. It has, but one thing that does emerge, um, and the plantation rooms are a particularly good example of this, is that even with all of that, there are styles and flavour profiles that are completely typical for various islands. Um, for instance, Jamaica is a very good one. You can make any kind of rum in Jamaica, and famously they do. They even make Malibu and lots of other rubbish. But um, the traditional Jamaican style... <laughs> you said style, rubbish. <laughs> it's rubbish. It's not rubbish if you're 17 and a trainee hairdresser, but yeah. generally, yeah, it's rubbish. Um, but generally, Jamaican rum, classic Jamaican rum, is bang full of strength. It's got lots of esters. It's been made with dunder. It's, it's, it's completely pot still rum. Uh, aged a little bit, maybe not. Uh, and if you take that flavor profile and you drink a Jamaican rum like that, you're really drinking Jamaican rum. So maybe, maybe we can revive the idea of terroir just a little bit. Well, and that's why an event like this is so great, because you can learn about it, you can really focus on the different types of flavors that come from each island, and um, so where can we learn more about you, Philip, and the kind of work you do? Do you have a website? Uh, I do. It's liquidsolutions.org. I update it every six years, whether I need to or not.
Every six years, right. come on, even the internet hasn't been around for that long. I'll wait to see if the internet catches on. No, uh, your best uh, bet for some Daily Duff is to befriend me on Facebook. I'm Philip Duff with a single L. Uh, Excellent. Or on Twitter, same thing. Uh, or just turn up at any decent bar or bar show or get together of bartenders and other degenerates there's an excellent chance I'm going to be there and and what about Miami Do, is there one particular place do you enjoy to go drinking here uh, there is and I was in it last night uh, the place where my friend John Lermayer holds sway the excellent Florida room at the Delano uh, and of course the traditional bartender hangout is of course Clark's so you'll find me there later tonight Great. maybe drinking room thank you Philip Thank you.